Does 1 Timothy 6.10 teach that money and evil are the same thing? And the answer to that is money and evil are not the same thing, but the love of money is very closely related to evil. So look with me at 1 Timothy 6, verse 10. 1 Timothy 6, verse 10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. A lot of people don't like the King James reading because what it says is the love of money is the root of all evil. And so folks look at that verse and they say, well, I don't like that. The modern versions will sometimes say the money, love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people like that better. And just so you understand the thinking, let's say that I'm walking and I stub my toe and I shout a bad word. Well, is that sin motivated by the love of money? It doesn't seem like it is. It's just anger and bitterness and resentfulness and so on. So there are some sins that aren't, don't seem to be motivated by the love of money. And so people look at that verse and they say, well, the King James is wrong. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, no, it's really not. Well, yet again, I'm going to show you this cheat code, but... I'm going to use the dictionary. So let's look up the word all. Okay. The first definition, every one or the whole number of particulars. That is all in the sense of every single one, no exception. But read verse 2. Verse 2, definition 2. The whole quantity, extent, duration, amount, quality, or degree, as all the wheat, all the land, all the year, all the strength. This word signifies then the whole or entire thing, or all the parts or particulars which compose it. It always precedes the definitive adjective, so on. Let's go down to this next section. This word, not only in popular language, but in the scriptures often signifies indefinitely a large portion or number or a great part. In other words, the first meaning was every single one, no exceptions. The second meaning isn't every single one, no exceptions. It's indefinitely a large portion or number or a great part. Thus all the cattle in Egypt died, all Judea and all the region round about Jordan, all men held John as a prophet, are not to be understood in a literal sense, but as including a large part or very great numbers. In other words, the word all sometimes doesn't mean every single one. It simply means the great part. Okay. Now, this is a statement here about the scriptures. So we need to verify whether or not this is true. In other words, we want to see if Scripture agrees with this definition. So get with me Genesis chapter 24 and verse 66. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 66. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple examples of the use of the word all. So Genesis 24, 66. And the servant told Isaac all things that he had done. When the servant told Isaac all things that he had done, did he tell him every single thing he did? Well, and then I put my right foot in front. Then I shifted my weight and I put my left foot in front and then I put the right foot in front. I did a little arm swing to keep my balance. And then I got hungry, so I had a taco and I was thirsty, so I had... Isn't all things there a reference to all relevant things? In other words, he didn't tell him every single action that he took. If I, if I say to you, I want you to tell me all the details about your vacation. 
Do you say, well, then I put my foot on the accelerator and then I pushed down, but then I had to steer and then I, I had to come up to this slide. I had to turn left. So I put my signal on. I made sure there was. You understand that the word all, you're, you're, you're not meaning every single thing. And that's just the way that we use the word. Now, what I want to do next, 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of, mo of money is the root of all evil. Well, we saw from Genesis 24 that all doesn't have to mean every single thing. But now I want to look at all evil. So get with me Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 8. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 8. Proverbs 20, verse 8. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Well, the idea of that verse is that when a king sits in judgment and he scatters away all evil with his eyes, what's happening is people are fearful of the king executing judgment, so they behave, right? But when it says the king scattereth away all evil with his eyes, is there no one in the audience that's th thinking an evil thing? Is there no one that, you know, uses a bad word? Is there no one that treats someone rudely? See, the all evil there can't include all sin. Does a human king have the ability to scatter all sin with his eyes? The answer to that is no. Look with me at Joshua 23, verse 15. Joshua 23, verse 15. Joshua 23, 15. Therefore, it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he have destroyed you from off this good land, which the Lord your God hath given you. Well, that verse says the Lord, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things. Well, when the verse says that, did God literally bring every single evil thing upon them? Well, he couldn't have flooded them, right? He couldn't have imposed a worldwide flood on them because he didn't do that. Did he impose upon them the mark of the beast? No. So you understand that the, where it says they're all evil things, obviously that's a great number of evil things and no one would want that. But is it every single evil judgment that God can bring? It's not. It doesn't include a worldwide flood. It doesn't include the mark of the beast. There are several things it doesn't include. Does it include more than enough to be a problem? Sure. But it doesn't include every evil thing without exception. My point is simply this. What those verses are showing you, when Scripture uses the word all, sometimes it does mean every single person. When Christ gave himself a ransom for all that includes everyone. There's no exception to that. But when the kings scattereth away all evil, that doesn't mean every single evil, every single sin. It just doesn't. So what does 1 Timothy 6.10 say then? Look at me at 1 Timothy 6.10. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some have coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. The idea is, what will the love of money do in a person's life? It's going to be the root of all evil in the sense of, will it produce covetousness? Will it produce dishonesty? Will it produce unkindness? It will produce a whole host of human sins it won't produce every single one. Look with me at Matthew 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. This is a cross-reference that I think gives you an idea of, of how 
of what uh, 1 Timothy 6.10 is saying. Matthew 6.24, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. What I'd encourage you to think about is this. Modern man in his materialism worships mammon. Yes? The modern society, this is reality, is very covetous. It is very materialistic. And that is the worship of mammon. And what will the worship of mammon produce? Well, it will produce all evil. And that's simply something that, that, you know, is, you know, apparently the case. It's, it's evident that that's the case.